Hey everyone, welcome back to Daily Downshift. I'm your host Nestor and today we're doing our six month ownership review of the Corvette C8. So I picked the car up on March 24th and yesterday actually was the 24th of September, which is the six month mark exactly. Now I have about 6,904 kilometers, which might not sound like the most amount of kilometers, but um, honestly, I think that's kind of crazy because I haven't really taken the car on any very long road trips. Uh, we went to a couple of cars shows and car meets and stuff like that but uh i live in a city i'm from toronto and so i'm kind of actually surprised that i put that many kilometers on the car and for my american friends that's probably about 4500 miles if i had to guess we've done quite a lot with the car i mean you guys have seen most of it we've been doing lots of races um lots of corvette meets cruises and obviously some modifications like the carbon fiber uh and so it's been a pretty eventful six months I would say but uh, overall the time has really just flown by enough chit chat though let's go for a drive Alright, so we're going to be talking about a couple of things in today's video, number one being reliability. You guys all know how important that is, it's one of the only things you look for when you're buying a car uh, because if it's anything like a Murcielago, you probably want to steer clear. We're also going to talk about the smile factor, the it factor, you guys know what I'm talking about, has that worn off or not, and overall, lastly, what we're going to talk about is any regrets with this vehicle. Did I order the wrong package, did I want something extra, and we're going to cover all that in today's video. Alrighty, let's get out of the car and talk about this bad boy right here. Alright, so the car is super dirty right now. I don't know if you guys can tell how good it's going to show up on YouTube here, but the car is extremely filthy. We got to go for a car wash after this, but first of all, guys, I want to talk about the reliability of this thing. Um, has there been any problems and, uh, and what were those? So obviously, one of the reasons why many people did not get this car is because they were worried that it was a new platform, the first mid-engine Corvette, and overall, there would be so many different differences in this car compared to C7s and C6s that they would get stuff wrong and of course you know that does happen with every single manufacturer not just with Corvette now surprisingly it hasn't been all bad there have been some recalls yes but nothing serious I mean I have not had to give this car up yet which is very surprising after six months of ownership I thought by now you know they'd figure something out that would totally destroy the engine or something and all of our cars would have to be recalled back to Bowling Green Kentucky but that's not the case now I have seen videos online in different instances where somebody's engine blows up or their transmission goes I've even seen someone putting nitrous in their car taking it to the track and then blowing their axles which of course you know that's kind of user error at that point and you guys should know this by now but those types of negative videos always get the most amount of views on YouTube and so if you see stories like that there's a good reason as to why you're seeing those stories you're not gonna hear about the six or seven thousand Corvette C8s that have been made that are flawless with no issues whatsoever and so I just kind of wanted to put that out out there now it's not been all perfect for my vehicle I have had some minor issues but again nothing serious I mean I haven't even had any electronics issues which is quite surprising to be honest now the first issue that I did have was right over here the electronic door button to open the passenger side door now the issue I would have with that specifically is that whenever a passenger would click that button and push the door, um, it would actually get jammed inside of the housing. Now this wasn't an electronics issue, it was actually a panel misalignment. So the housing that surrounds the button was not properly installed and it was a bit misaligned and so the button would get stuck inside sometimes and that would screw up the entire door. I also had a panel misalignment issue on my front right fender above the wheel arch. Now let me go ahead and show you what that looks like guys. So. As you can see, right over here on the passenger side, it still is a tiny bit misaligned, but I'm telling you guys, it used to be down to here. It was pretty horrible and I made a video on it back in the day. The whole headlight was just not in place properly, but again, a local GM dealership fixed it and uh, it only took a couple of days. I'd say overall the electronics, the engine, all the fundamental things are solid, at least for my vehicle and others that I've seen online. But the issues that you're probably going to notice on your car are, you know, related to build quality and, and human error. A lot of panel misalignment and um, I, I haven't honestly been too happy with the quality control that GM has been doing at their plant but I have to mention this once again this is a completely redesigned Corvette C8 it's nothing like the Corvette C7 in fact it's so much better miles better and um, for that I have to give Chevy credit and commend them once again 
All right, guys, we're here in the passenger seat, and the reason why we're here is because we gotta talk about the it factor of this vehicle. Now, I don't sit here very often, but when I do and when I get the rare chance to sit here, I do notice a couple of things that really surprises me. Number one, the amount of people that give you looks in this car is pretty insane. If you told me six months ago when I was picking up this car that I would have every single person looking at me when I drive by or when I'm parked at the gym or at a shopping mall, I seriously would not believe you because at the end of the day, it's a Corvette and a Corvette's not like a Lamborghini or a Ferrari. It doesn't get crazy amounts of looks, but because this is a mid-engine car, a lot of people I think mistake it for a McLaren or a Ferrari or a Lambo and uh, that definitely adds to the it factor. And even the amount of people that know what the car is, they're still seriously impressed and really want to come check it out and have a conversation with you. Now, I filled this thing up probably 20, 25 times over the course of me owning it, and there has been one instance that I remember where somebody has not come up to me while filling this thing up and hasn't had a conversation with me, and that was at 1 a.m. when there was nobody in the gas station. So that just goes to show you how many people are really interested in this car. And speaking about gas, let's talk about the fuel economy on this thing. So my fuel economy is, 16.8 liters for a hundred kilometers now yes don't make fun of the Canadians or the liters or the kilometers if you guys want you can translate that but I'll translate it for you all right not that great to be fair though when I first got this car I had it in track mode the entire time because the steering wheel tightens up the response time of the actual transmission everything gets a lot more tighter and sportier and so I was driving in track mode 24 7 and really just pushing it to its limit but now I've actually noticed that um, I enjoy sport mode quite a lot and sport mode actually gives me some great fuel efficiency so I'm in track mode right now but if I go ahead and switch it over to sport mode there's a feature that actually comes up that is called cylinder deactivation so that v4 right underneath the drive is uh, is actually what shows you that four of the cylinders deactivated and you are now in a nice Prius that's great on gas but let's be honest with ourselves we're not really here for the fuel efficiency we're here to do a little bit of this. Oh, one thing I actually forgot to mention, there was a recall for the front hood, which is the frunk, of course. Uh, it was flying open on some people when they were driving at high speeds, but we didn't actually have to take our vehicles in for service for that. We actually got an over-the-air update, kind of like how you update your phone. Uh, same kind of concept. We just updated our car, and the front hood issue was magically resolved. I guess that's the beauty of electronics these days. Yes, there may be more issues and more complexity, but at the same time, fixing things is a lot faster. All right, now it's time for the burning question. Do I have any regrets with this Corvette C8? Did I order something incorrectly? Did I not get something I wanted? Just take a look at this thing. I mean, come on. Even if you were to regret something, it is quite a beautiful vehicle, especially because of all the uh, third-party accessories I added on top of it. So the quick answer is no. There's actually nothing that I really regret on this car. There's one thing that I actually would have gone if I had the opportunity, and that is magnetic ride control. Uh, but unfortunately, if I wanted to get the magnetic ride control, I also had to dish out money for the Z51 package, and that's just not what I wanted to do, especially because in Canadian dollars, it would cost me about $10,000 to get both Z51 and the magnetic ride control control and I don't have $10,000 to just be throwing out for packages and upgrades. Look at all this dirt and grime. Oh man. That is one beat up Corvette C8. I'll be honest with you guys. I'd much rather get a car that's very, very base and just add on a ton of customized options that are going to be exclusive to me and my build. And I really don't want there to be another Corvette C8 out there that looks like my car. And that's exactly what we've done with this. I mean, look at this. First thing we did was we got new rims for the car. Again, big shout out to MRR wheels. They absolutely killed it. These are Carbon Flash FS06s if you guys want them. The link will be in the description. We got the tire writing on the sidewall in white, of course. We did that DIY mod in our garage. We installed the carbon fiber side skirt right there. We installed the carbon fiber mirror as well. We wrapped the entire roof in a vinyl wrap, which I think looks amazing and it matches that black right there. And then finally, we also got ourselves the carbon fiber engine cover. So we've done a lot of things to this car, but more is on the way. And lastly, guys, as we get in the car and get out of here, I do want to talk about the price point and the overall market right now for this car because 
it's a little crazy out there. So I bought this car in Canadian dollars after taxes for about $85,000. Right now, before tax, the car is going for about a hundred, five hundred, ten thousand uh, dollars. That's at least what I've seen on Auto Trader and all sorts of different uh, car selling websites. So I guess your guys' dying question is, do I want to sell this car or will I sell this car? And the answer is yes and no. I do want to sell this car at some point, but definitely not right now because there's still a lot of things that I want to do to this vehicle to modify and make it my own. And I feel like there's still so much content to make with this car, especially with winter coming up. You guys already know, like I mentioned earlier, we're putting some winters on this thing and really taking it sideways. And uh, I think it's going to be a lot of fun and it's going to make for some great content on YouTube. But I do want to say that I want to sell this car probably in the summer of 2021 and then upgrade to the Z06 model because all, you guys already know the Z06 model is going to be absolutely insane. So that's the game plan guys. Of course things can obviously change but uh, that's kind of where I'm at right now in my head and I think we're going to follow with that plan right there. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, of course drop a like, subscribe for more daily Corvette CA content and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.